there's a roadblock which seems to be from elephants not that there are any elephants around oh now unfortunately i just got bitten by a biting fly which is not so pleasant Ow, that actually hurt. Biting flies are the most horrible things. If you want to know what it feels like, basically what you need to do is you need to take your fingers, put it on your skin and just slowly increase the pressure until it starts to really hurt. And that's kind of how a biting fly feels. You, it'll kind of land on you and then slowly but surely this pressure just goes more and more and more and then eventually your brain kind of registers. Hang on a second, that actually is quite painful and no longer unpleasant, well no longer pleasant and then you kind of swat them away. They are horrible things and things that come out extensively in the summer months so I've not missed them at all and hopefully they won't be too hectic but now that we don't have that many buffalo or zebras around at the moment I'm hoping that the biting flies stay away for a while not that that's probably going to happen but anyway we shall live in hope as to that being the course of action hmm I wonder I'm trying to think when we're going to get more of these buffalo coming back. It's really been so slim with buffalo over the last few months that it would be nice just to see some of them kind of grazing around, even if it's just Duggar boys again. It's, it's really, you know, it's an animal that we, we see and it kind of is very underappreciated and people kind of see it as a glorified cow and really not too much goes into sort of watching of buffalo and they ultimately are animals that generally tend to be wallowers that not do too much, much like what these birds are doing now. They're having a really good bath. So you can see the oxpecker in front and the birchal starling at the back and they're having a wonderful time cooling down. It's the perfect weather for a bath and I love how birds bath. They seem to relish it and the way that they duck their head under and then they use their wings just to get water all over them. It must be so nice and refreshing. Imagine being a, a bird that's covered in these feathers and it's all hot and you've been on an animal all day trying to feed or in the starling's case followed animals around and so now you find yourself near water and you can just kind of cool down and get all those feathers moist and wet and your body much cooler but back to the buffalo it's really been a kind of a miss from the winter scenario and you know normally winter months is all about buffalo and lions and that struggle that takes place as the buffalo have lose condition and the lions start to really hammer them and this year we just haven't had that and it's been a little bit of a kind of a miss from from my side I've, I've really missed having them around also from a bushwalk point of view it's been quite sad not having them they uh, add an element of danger and an element of kind of having to watch what's going on and so it's been a bit sad not having them around so i really do hope they do come back and the reason why i thought of them is Chelapan was always where we used to see a lot of buffalo tracks and so i'm hoping they do come back but look at how beautiful this bird is in this afternoon light look at those colors as they reflect back towards us remember that these birds are completely black in color they don't actually have true green and blue pigments it's just the way that the light is refracting from their feathers into our eye now the reason why i know these are a birchal starling is because for those of you that are newer viewers that don't know the birds very well is that the birchal starling has a very dark colored eye you see there's no yellow around that eye like the other two starlings of a similar color would have it also has a very long tail and a far more kind of black dark appearance than what you'll see on the greater blue eared and the cape glossy those tend to be a lot more bright greenish color this one tends to have a lot more blues and purples than greens in them and they also then like i say are a lot larger have a bulkier longer tail and even a bulkier build to themselves but this bird is just shaking off all the excess water before it flies it's obviously quite difficult to fly when you're full of water and so it's just getting rid of all of those scratching preening making sure their feathers are in great condition before they start flying but look at the colors radiating off that bird wonderful isn't it it's almost like a dance move we maybe have to get Taylor to mimic this for us since she's all about up to doing things. We'll have to try to get her to mimic the starling drying off in terms of her dance moves. Well, we won't see Taylor just for a little bit. There's a few technical issues in the Mara, so we're with us for a little bit. And so once we get that sorted, then Taylor is going to have to come up with the dance moves as well as the jokes and entertain us all. but very cool to see. Sometimes, you know, we get into a situation where we're so often looking and focusing on animals that we don't appreciate the beauty of these birds. And, you know, it's so good just to sometimes sit and just appreciate all the other little things that make up this ecosystem. Now, 
talking about technical glitches and gremlins i believe taylor has sorted them out she's kicked them away and so she's ready to burn some tacky as we say in south africa and show us her best dance moves with the lions my goodness i'm so sorry i just did the biggest yawn in the whole world these lions are making me exhausted but i suppose the beautiful view that we've got at the moment makes up for it because they're still laying fast asleep so we dropped down in the um little quarry now megan was that the real comms there hmm. <laughs> you're lucky that i'm all the way in the mara Mm. Now, Tristan, you were commenting on my dance moves. I'm trying to think when you've seen me dancing before because I think you maybe need to borrow Byron's glasses. I do love to dance and sing, though, but I'm not particularly good at it, but that's fine. Um, and just make... Who, do I, who actually listens to me sing? Do you know what happened to me the other day? And I'm very upset. I've lost all trust with the ladies in Final Control now. I must tell you about my horrific experience. Uh, we were having tech problems. Uh, and gremlins were being pesky so Alex had to go and change batteries at Serena and I really liked to sing so I sang and sang and sang and sang and sang and anyways guess what happened they recorded me singing how horrific is that how can one do that to somebody else I trusted them and they were all pretending to sing with me well they were singing with me through the mic or well, the, through the radio but they were just recording me. I'm very embarrassed. Anyways, wouldn't it be nice if these lions sat up now and gave us the most perfect silhouette shot? Uh, it's one of my favorite things. I've only ever had lions silhouetted up on the skyline a couple of times. It's actually quite a difficult thing to view. Uh, I have had an amazing sighting once with the southern pride lionesses. So li pride lions, it hangs down and around. Sabi, Sabi, uh, where else? Lion sands and a couple of other places around there. Uh, they like Kirkman's, they go all the way down to Sabi River. And they pose beautifully up on uh, one of the man-made dams. The wall, dam wall was quite high, and they were walking around, and it was beautiful. And I think that was actually the last time that I had a decent silhouette sighting. That was in 2015. So, today could be the day. Yes, here we go. Cross your paw. Now, I actually don't want him to sit up too tall because then he's going to give his presence away. But the way that he's moving makes me think that the wildebeest are slowly coming around this uh, little quarried area, which is good. Maybe they're just going to completely surround the lions and then they can pick and choose as to which ones they want to go for. Maybe that's what the lioness is waiting for. But they're not ready. They're watching. Their eyes are open, but they're just enjoying the, the their siesta. So, Judy, you're wondering, what is the distance between myself, the lions, and the wildebeest? Well, we've got triangle at the moment. Uh, so, I'm at the, it will put me at the top. I'm at the top um, the corner of the triangle. I am about 40 meters away from the lions or so, 35, 40 meters away. And I would say I'm probably about 60 meters, 70 meters away from, I'm just looking, from the wildebeest, which are up there. There, and I think they're going that way. I'm watching the monitor to see what I'm doing. Ooh, drawing. Uh, so, yeah, so they're all around us. They obviously the wildebeest we saw coming from, let me turn like this quickly. We had them coming from this way and they pushed around, but now they're just coming back because they've seen that the rest of the herd is not actually going straight south. They're actually turning slightly more to the west, which is great. So, that's what I'll say. Eventually, and maybe they're just going to do a loop and just go round and round and round. That's no, probably not what they're going to do, but it would be nice. And the sun is getting perfect. Oh, look at the beautiful colors and the clouds, the reflection on the water and then hopefully a beautiful silhouette of a lion i don't know have we had any decent silhouette sightings before of lions perhaps if we have i know we've had some great ones with the cheetah if you have had a beautiful silhouetted sighting of lions before send us your screenshots let's reminisce uh let's hashtag safari live of course or you can post them on on the youtube chat too i don't know if you can even post pictures on the youtube chat to be honest but otherwise hashtag safari live on twitter that i know you can do and we'd love to see them and then we compare them the ones that you've taken now to your your ones from your past sightings that you have i can't imagine there would be an abundance but i'm sure there would have been a few seen as though wild earth has been going for many many years now
Now, Jamie, I'm wondering why won't the other lions uh, will warn each other that their food is coming? The adults know. The lionesses do know that they're there. I mean, you can see that one girl, she had her eyes open just slightly, even though she was resting. Uh, I'm sure they can smell them every now and then, although the wind is... Oh, actually, no, I can't say that the wind is dying down because I've just gone into a quarry, silly tailor. Of course, you'd be more sheltered. Sorry, my brain was not working for a minute there. Um, <clears throat> so, so they don't need to. Uh, normally, what will happen, though, is if one line gets... In an, an inkling that wants to go and catch something or that something's coming, they often sit up and that sort of movement, that shuffling in the grass is enough to make everybody else also look around. So when they are sleeping, they're not fast asleep like you and I were if we were snoring. They're having cat naps, so they're just sort of keeping an eye out. Hello. Oh, there we go. That's the sight that we like to see. Ears pricked forward, eyes wide open and staring in the direction of prey. Oh, that's beautiful, Sebastian. Oh, good evening, or should I say good morning? <clears throat> oh, what's going on over here? Right, everybody, popcorn out. This could get interesting. Maybe it was their strategy. Maybe they just went, you know what, the clouds are going to come in. It's best to hunt in the darkness, and, and that is true. Uh, there's going to be no light whatsoever coming from the stars tonight. It's going to be pretty much pitch black. Only in the far western corners, it's uh, sort of clear. The rest of us is just massive clouds around us. I'm surprised we haven't been rain on, rained on yet. Please don't rain on us, because that means we'll have to leave, and I don't want to leave. I feel like I've invested too much into the sighting to just throw it away because of a little rain. Please don't do that to us nature please be kind you can also hear the odd bloop, bloop. it is the bubbling casinos also starting to call getting to that dusk period now where all the crepuscular creatures are going to start waking up just starting to say a bit of movement of wildebeest can you see them here seb just in this little gap they're turning around now and going back the other way look at that just up my arms are too short, the little T-Rex arms. Can't reach. There they are. Not coming down here, though. Oh, Seb. <sighs> Can I be naughty? Please, may I be naughty? We don't often to get, get to see silhouettes. Like, I'm going to do it. I'll take down. I'm sorry in advance, but I am really have to do this because it's just too beautiful not to take this opportunity. Also, I'm very sorry, everyone. Oh, my goodness. Gorgeous. Look at that. Isn't that just to absolutely to die for? That is spectacular. I'll save my, if I have to take a second picture, I will save that shot because I think it needs to be one of a lion standing up on this ridge. And then, oh my goodness, is going to be magnificent. There's also another frog squawking. I don't know what it is. Mm, I do know what it is because we hear that call in South Africa. I'll just have to think about it for a minute. Oh, lions, you are so lovely. It would be more lovely, though, if you could show us how strong you were. I'm just worried because there's rain coming. There's big rain coming as well from, from all the way from the north. But maybe we've got a bit of time. I'm just looking at the big dark clouds that are pulling on over. Oh, not again. <laughs> Although I can't say not again because I've been lucky. I have been lucky. There we go. Stand up, little lion. Stand up. Everyone wake up. Sometimes it's nice just to <clears throat> just to sit quietly and enjoy, but it's a bit windy. When the frogs start calling more, I'll, I will sit quietly for you. Our young, f look, hello. Have you decided to come down? You're just going to go catch your own dinner now. You're sick of everybody just sitting about. Are you a boy or are you a girl? You just look so lioness-like. No, you're a boy. You're a, you're a boy. Sorry, but you're very pretty. I'm sneaking past the car now. Oh my goodness. Careful, going right past. I can't move now. I have to wait for this line. I don't know where it's going. Uh, is it. Can you see? Are there wildebeest behind us? Are they close? Okay, what we're going to do is we, we'll move now. I just want to let this line get a bit of distance behind us before we start repositioning. We'll have a one last look at the three that are silhouetted so beautifully against the sky. 
I just want one to stand up so badly because I know you'd all love it. It would be beautiful. Oh, we're going to get a yawn. Oh, that's so cool. Oh, I don't know why. Well, I hope everybody is just as excited as me. I'm squealing in my seat. I'm very excited for this. Uh, we will move in a minute. Uh, just want to make sure that that line does get a little bit away from it. I'm also, I'm be, I know I'm being cheeky today, but I've been really good. I haven't been taking many photos while I'm on drive, and this is just too diff, too hard to not pass up. Bless you, Lioness. It was Lioness that did a bit of big sneeze, like me sneezing this morning. So, like we know that a youngster is not going to be able to take on a wildebeest by itself, we need to wait for these adults to get up and start moving because that's going to be the best option for all of them. Yes, guys, there's plenty of food around you. The wind is starting to swell and there's potentially rain coming on in. So, girls, your time is now and it's that awkward light too, which makes me think that I'm seeing all sorts of other things and I'm pretty sure it does the same thing to the wildebeest. There we go. Big yawns. Yeah, that's what we're looking for. That's so cool. How beautiful is that? Yeah. Oh my goodness. We are in, well, nature heaven right now. Unbelievable. There we go. If all of you are thinking, oh, I really need a new wallpaper, now's your opportunity, isn't it? And I bet all the ladies in final control today are so jealous, aren't you? Megan, how jealous of you on a scale of 1 to 10? Sorry to rub this in, though. Megan! So, Megan says 11 out of 10. I don't blame you. This is a spectacular sighting. We don't often get to see this, like I said, so count yourselves very lucky that you're watching this with me. And the wind is actually howling even louder than it has been, which is fantastic. Uh, and hopefully it's going to keep the rain at bay. Actually, what it's done is it's just blown the cloud quite high and above us. Uh, so well, that's what we want. We don't want to get rained on. Now, jean mier you're, on, you, well, you're not you're wondering. You've said that it looks like the beginning of The Lion King. Oh. Right, sorry, we're just having a little chat. See, I, um, Seb, let me reposition quickly. Let's get the other way, and then we can have both. But they are looking, so I'm going to try and reposition as quickly as I can. Let's go. But come on, Mila, you have to have some power. So let's not get stuck now. My goodness, my hat is going to blow off. I have to hold it. Now, apparently a lot of you can hear loads of birds calling. No birds. Those are the bubbling casinas. Those are frogs. I just want to poke my nose up here quickly and we'll reverse back in. Um, so yeah, so those are frogs that are making noises like that. Where's our lion gone? You are going to mess it up. I'm going back down here. I'm going to sit and we're going to look at the silhouette because that's the most beautiful thing. That little lion knows that it hasn't got a chance and it's just trying to stay, it's just staying low. It's just keen, just excited. I'm also, I have to put my jersey on now. It's absolutely freezing. Sorry. Um, just so we can all enjoy this. My goodness. My coat is going, everything's going to blow away if the wind carries on like this. I'm glad that we're hiding away in this little quarry. I really am. It wouldn't be good. And Seb, can you see the wildebeest? You might just be able to see the tops of their heads. And they're, they're turning up quite a bit of dust now in the corner. There's more still coming. Look how beautiful that is. That is all dust that you can see blowing at the background. So just to give you an idea how the wind is really, really howling this afternoon. This is truly a spectacular sighting. You know, sometimes we go days and days and days and, you know, you just think, when is my luck going to turn? When am I really going to get an opportunity to see some cool things? And then, here it is. Here's my day. And I couldn't have picked a better 
cameraman to be with. So thank you, Sebastian, for spending this. It's, yeah, it is amazing. And thank you to all of you, of course. I believe you're all sending through spectacular screenshots. I, I'm so glad. I'm sure these are going to go into your top favorites. Uh, I, I w wouldn't imagine anything less. As like I said, we know how special something like this is. But the light is fading quickly. It's fading very quickly. Big yawns. They haven't really spent too much time grooming, but they might not uh, worry about that because the food is, of course, in such close proximity. But typically, when they wake up, they will they will groom. This is nice. I'm actually just going to sit quietly for a little bit, and I think you can all just enjoy. Wow. Megan, did anybody say that they'd um, had a, another silhouetted lion sighting before? Were there any screenshots that came through or any comparisons? Wonderful. So I believe you do get that you have had a couple of sightings. What I'll do is I'll have a look at them a little bit later on Twitter. And wow. Oh, that's also nice. Look at that. Hello, Lion. No, 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 no. Don't you dare. Come back. You're going to ruin it for everybody. just deciding what we're going to do. Okay, we're going to try and reposition very quickly and see what's going on over here. Hopefully this youngster hasn't ruined it for the adults. Uh, let's go back to the Sabi Sand, Tristan and a leopard. Well, we can see we're back with Hassan and, well, not much has really changed. He's changed position, but his sleeping arrangement is still like it was earlier. Head is down, his tongue at least is in now, not looking as dopey. The nice thing is that we're in such a beautiful spot at the moment. He's about eye level with us at the so it's just a really different angle on a leopard. You don't generally get to see them at this sort of angle. You're normally kind of higher than what they are or sometimes a little bit lower if they're on termite mounds. But at the moment, we're perfectly kind of placed to be at the same level as him and if he wakes up and stares at us it's going to be absolutely wonderful but you can see he's really quite fast asleep and i wonder why he moved maybe it's a little bit cooler on this side there's a lot more shade on offer um, he's also a little bit more hidden if anything does go towards the dam so it could have been that something came past that maybe pushed him away or he's just decided that this is a better spot but look at that big bulging tummy you can see how fast and how rapid the rate of breathing is it's an incredibly quick breath that he's taking and as we discussed earlier it's all just to do with the heat as well as the amount of food that he's ingested over the last little bits and there's his tail curled at the back Romit, you're asking if his paws are nearly the same size as a lion's? No, so Hosanna, even though he does have big paws and is a growing individual, his paws are still much smaller than that of a lioness's. Um, he's, his size paws are probably that of a, about it, I would say, a six to seven or eight month old um, lioness, so that sort of size. He's not much bigger than that. A leopard generally does have smaller feet than the lions, and so his paw size is still quite small. The only the only leopards that I've seen that tracks in any way resemble that of a lioness of an adult lioness would be somebody like Anderson. So Imsehwe and his dad and and himself, um, they've got really large, big paw prints, and in the right substrate can sometimes look a bit lionessish and of that size. But it's only in soft substrate where this, this paw size expands out. Generally though a leopard's paw is a little bit smaller than that of lions and the thing that's nice and easy when it's when it comes to tracking and, and particularly when you're tracking um, the cats and, you, and if you're a bit kind of nervous of telling the difference between a lion and a leopard very seldom are you going to find a lion of this size that has a similar paw size to a leopard on its own. It will be a young lion which then inevitably means it's with a pride even if it is a female that is two three years old 
she theoretically should be with other lionesses and therefore there will be a sign of another cat track somewhere close by. Male leopards on the other hand generally are on their own and so normally it's a singular cat footprint that you're seeing as opposed to multiple footprints and, that, and that's a good way of thinking about it. If you are doing your own tracking, if you're in Kruger or something and you see it going down the road, that is a, something that you can look out for. Oh, there we go. It's exactly what I was hoping for. He's now popped his head up and isn't that just absolutely spectacular? We, same level as him and he is looking as beautiful as you could ever wish for from a leopard that's for sure he really does look good sitting atop his little platform if you want to call it that couldn't ask for anything better that's for sure I wonder what he's spotted. Maybe there's some animals that are starting to now come for a drink. It's that time of the day, and we were talking about it earlier before we kind of left Hosanna, is that at this time you'll often find things like Nyala or Stienbok or yeah, Impalas coming for a drink, and so maybe something is slowly on the horizon here somewhere that he can then pick up, and, and that's maybe why he's looking around a little bit and just checking to see what's happening. It, that could be the reason that he popped his head up. You can see he's starting to groom himself a little bit. Now, grooming is generally a sign that he is starting to get ready to wake up a little bit more and start to actually move around. Now, Debbie, you say that. Hosanna reminds you a lot of quarantine, the same kind of relaxed demeanor as what quarantine had. Well, unfortunately, I never really got to spend time with well, quarantine. I've never actually even seen him, so I don't know, but I will take your word for it. And, and if quarantine was anything like Hosanna, then he must have been an absolutely special individual because there's not many male leopards that are as relaxed as this guy is at this age. Generally, male leopards, when they're on their own in the first few years after leaving mom, are quite shy and skittish. They don't want too much attention attracted to them. They don't really want to be seen and a lot of fuss to be made over them because obviously they're trying to forge their way and they don't want the big males to find them that easily and, and so you end up with a situation where they're a little bit kind of wary of what's going on but you know this particular individual is so relaxed and I believe quarantine was as well and quarantine's turned out to be a wonderful male a big individual that has still hung around this area and hopefully we're going to see more of the same from Asana and then that he's going to end up also gleaning some sort of territory in this particular section that we'll see him for many years to come because he is an absolutely special individual and the site that we've got right now is really quite wonderful like I say he's lying at my eye level so I'm basically looking straight at to where he is you can see the sun is slowly setting behind the dam wall to his sort of left hand side a little bit or our left hand side should I say as we look at him and so it's just a magical scene of him kind of grooming and the sun going down and it's all very peaceful and still there's not too many calls at this time of the day it's the time where animals are slowly but surely starting to settle down and it's just a wonderful and, and probably the one of my favorite times in the bush is when you just sit like this especially when you get to look at something as beautiful as, as a cat like Osana and you can just take in the scenery around you and absorb what's going on and listen to the bird calls and kind of just take it all in it's a very special thing to be able to do this now he is going to groom himself probably quite extensively he's spent a lot of the day resting he's also remember fed on a carcass this morning there'll be bits of meat and blood that are still on his paws he also would have dislodged fur going up and down trees and lying down there's also insects that may have gotten onto him and parasites so he'll spend quite a long time grooming himself before he actually gets going generally you'll find leopards are very good at keeping themselves clean and so they are meticulous about going over those paws the legs they'll go over the chest area a bit of the body make sure that everything is in good condition before they begin their afternoons patrolling around but he looks absolutely wonderful, doesn't he? He's really starting to fill out. Look at the depth of his chest now. He's starting to look very male leopard-like. So, Proud Cat Mama, the leopards are named by the various rangers. It depends on where they occur as to who names them or where they've been born actually is probably a better way to put it so it's generally in the areas that they're born those particular rangers will then name the leopards and give them an IDing kind of portfolio with a name attached to it so that we know who they are and where they come from um, so it just depends where they're born and where they spend their youth that will indicate who gets the naming rights on them so hypothetically for Shadow's Cub it would be the Arethusa rangers given that she was born there for Hassan and Shongile it was the guys here at Juma because they were born here on Juma itself so that's basically how it works.
in terms of how they get named is different everywhere you go some guys like to name them in terms of areas that they're in others and sort of characteristics that they display and and give out as they start to grow and get older and that's also why they often only get an idea at about a year old um, and it just depends on the in different individual but look how he's getting in between the toes it's really going to town making sure those paws are absolutely clean and keeping the weapons clean for the night ahead and he really has come into his own this little guy is it's going to be amazing just to watch him develop and i hope wherever he does end up if it's not here that it's somewhere that we can follow his process right now while hosanna kind of flaps back down and begins to rest again let's go across to my friend scotty dyson who i don't know if we've seen him this afternoon but i believe he's got his five cheetah hello everyone and welcome back got some wonderful news all five of the musketeer coalition are together and they're walking straight past our vehicle good stuff my name's scott i'm teamed up with ferg sorry we've been so elusive today we've been trying to either conserve battery or being in low signal areas we've spent from about They were limping. I think four of the five of them have got a limp at the moment. Some of them front legs, some of them back legs. We're not exactly sure what happened. All that we know for certain is that one was missing the whole of yesterday and all five were found together this morning. I'm guessing that they've got some internal politics, that they're fighting with one another, possibly over a lady. But I could be wrong. Hard to be certain. Let's hope as we move now the signal stays strong. Now, I heard you were discussing with Tristan the naming of leopards and how that all goes about and just been chatting with Ferg and one of the researchers who's been out here with us all day and it will definitely be wonderful to try and, well actually not try to, just name these five individuals because we have already spent quite a lot of time with them and to be honest it's not too difficult to tell the difference between them. Um, the best way is to look for kind of unique spots either on their legs or inner legs, outer legs, their body seems to be the popular place. Let me actually go onto the high ground as opposed to slightly lower and I hope that we'll have better signal here. So it will be useful for us to name them so that we know who's missing, when they are, who's making the most kills, etc. But the other four are a little bit tricky. I've worked out how to distinguish the one that disappeared yesterday from the others. She's been following in this area since she arrived. I think she's been here for about nine years. Helena, wonderful Russian lady. She spent a lot of time with cheetahs and zoos before she eventually got her dream to come true and that was to be in Africa. Okay, I'm going to just stop here and I should be able to come straight past. Sorry about the picture breakup, let's hope things stabilize now that we've stopped moving. Now take a look at them as they move. They all kind of moving with a slight limp and let me see if I can work out. It's, it's difficult from when they're coming straight on. The best way to ID them is when they're on their side profile. Oh, it's tricky but you can see they're all hobbling and it could be self-induced. Now, we're not certain how many of these were brothers before they joined together as a coalition. It could be two sets of two brothers and a loner, or three brothers and two brothers. But what we're guessing is that the individual that was missing yesterday, plus one more that was searching free, f in a frenzy for him, or in all likelihood brothers, brothers, you just assume that that would kind of make sense beautiful and they're coming straight past the side of our car hello Fee well unfortunately Scotty is just in an area where those cheetahs are that there's a few gremlins and so the cheetahs have 
giving him a really wonderful time, but unfortunately the gremlins are a little bit hectic. Now you can see Hosanna is still fast, fast, fast asleep at the moment. He's not waking up for very much. There were a few Egyptian geese that flew away just now and that got him a little bit stirred up and he kind of looked around all of about two seconds, realized they were Egyptian geese and then when it was back down again. And you can see nothing is really moving but that tummy. His tail is not even twitching in any way whatsoever. He is one sleepy warm cat at this stage. The sun though is starting to set which means that hopefully we are going to see a situation where he's going to start waking up slowly but surely and start actually getting going and I'm, I'm really hoping after a hot day like today that his first port of call will be to go and have a little drink down at the dam because it's always wonderful to watch leopards drink they kind of get down and it's it's a nice sight to watch and it's also a great thing it's particularly because we have a school drive coming where we can educate the kids on how cats drink because it's not like a lot of people think where they scoop water into their mouth it's all to do with surface tension and the tension of the hairs that they have on the surface tension that pulls water up as they pull their tongue up and they then close their mouth over the droplets that are being pulled up by that tongue so it would be really nice if he did go and drink and also if he just looked around for us because it's nice to see his beautiful face and it really is such a wonderful angle that we're at at the moment that hopefully him waking up will be really special and we'll be able to kind of watch him walking at eye level with us which is a very special thing to see Look at all the markings on his tummy. You can see how the spots on the tummy don't kind of explode out like the ones on the rest of the body. They're still quite solid. So you tend to see on their stomachs very dark black spots that don't have the little creamy colored patch in the middle or golden patch in the middle, should we call it. So those are more spots than they are rosettes that you see on the tummy. Now the tummy, of course, is moving at a rate of nuts, so it's not easy to see, but it's still very cool. This is very seldom we're going to get such close-up visuals of a tummy of a predator moving up and down it's we're in such a wonderful place here and where he's lying is nice and open there's no bushes in the way so it is absolutely perfect and i'm sure hosanna is appreciating this breeze that is starting to pick up there's a much cooler breeze that we're starting to feel now coming out from the sort of eastern side blowing across us and so i'm sure hosanna maybe that's why he positioned himself here as this dam wall was maybe blocking that breeze a bit where he was lying earlier and that he's going to come now and sit in this area where there's a little bit more exposure to that wind that's funneling up this drainage line but you can hear how quiet it is Very, very few birds calling even. I was listening out, hoping that we'd hear some of the cuckoos just calling for the end of the day. I'm also eagerly anticipating and waiting for that woodland kingfisher to start calling because, well, they should slowly but surely start be starting to make their way down. I believe somebody said that they heard a woodland kingfisher recently. I myself haven't heard one. I've not even in remotely heard any sign of them, even north of us towards Hootsprate. There's been no kind of indication that they're around at the moment so I'm sure they will come soon I always say 6th of November that's my kind of date for the woodland kingfishers which means we've still got quite a bit of time to go and that's actually just reminded me that a certain few staff members that are working here at Safari Live actually owe me from our last bet that we had because we had a rain bet a few weeks ago and we're still waiting for payment of said debt from the likes of Megan May Nelson who is in FC who has just realized and is shouting in my ear I'm so right so yes Louise Pavid and Megan May Nelson and Senzo you guys all owe me a and I think Brent was involved in this as well wasn't he Megan Brent was also gave his sort of response so I'll have to claim my six apple juices from all of those individuals over the next little bit now of course if they all do pay up it's not going to use it for just myself we'll just share it amongst the crew and all have a good time with it well that's kind of the idea anyway but you would drink it yourself, Vildi. Don't worry, Vildi. You were not going to share it. No. Not if it was my prize. Not if it was your prize. And Vildi, I got it on the day. I would predicted the rain on the day. So we got a full Vildi in because Vian wasn't here for this. He was on leave at the time. So hopefully the guys will pay up and we can then utilize it. And especially in this hot weather, it would be a wonderful thing to have a couple of cold apple juices in the fridge for after drive. Not that we don't anyway, but it would be nice if the rest of them <laughs> were there as well. And it was ones that I hadn't paid for. But I want, Hosanna, of course, is completely unperturbed by this conversation. He doesn't give a hoot about my apple juices or the fact that I won a bet but it was just the Woodland Kingfisher story that reminded me about it and so I reckon 6th of November. Fiam, what are you calling for Woodland Kingfishers? Um, 
10th of November. So VM's on the 10th of November. Maybe another date is the 10th. I can't remember that as well. Maybe Impala birthing? That might also be the 10th. So Impala birthing also the 10th for VM. Right, so the 10th is going to be a busy day for you, VM. You're going to see a lot of action on the 10th. Now, Megan, what are you calling for Woodland Kingfisher? We'll get May Rope Megan in because she's directing today, so we'll have to ask her what she wants to do. So Megan is on the 11th. Oh, so close, Megan. You've got to give yourself some breathing room so that you can win it if you're not on the day. So Megan's on the 11th of October for Woodland Kingfisher. <laughs> so 15th of October or 15th of November, Megan, because now Megan's saying 15th of October, which was two days ago. So I would imagine that 15th of November is more what... Megan is referring to. Okay, so VM on the 10th, Megan on the 15th, I'm on the 6th. We'll have to ask Byron, Louise, and Ali, and who else is in camp at the moment, VM? That did in Essentia. In Essentia is going to have to weigh in on this, and Senzo also gets back soon. So if they're not back before Senzo gets back, we'll have to ask him as well. This is going to be quite a good wager. I know that the woodland kingfishers have actually been seen up near in Kenya area and starting to come southwards, and there are one or two people that have said they've heard them calling north of us already, but I don't know. I know the striped kingfisher has got a very similar call, and if you're not paying attention, it can often sound like that. So it'll be interesting just to see when they arrive. I reckon we're going for November. It's also it'll depend on rain if we get a big storm and a lot of water oh no so louise has pipped me now she's gone to the 5th of november which means she's given me no breathing space at all so if it's before the 6th i'm done for so i'm gonna have to hope that it's the 6th or after that i can at least win it but okay louise you've done a 5th of november guy Fawkes stay so i wonder if you will get your woodland kingfisher now Lou has really gotten into a place where she's pipped me badly. I was hoping that none of them would go earlier because then it meant that if it was before then I would still be able to utilize that to my advantage. Oh well. Anyway, Lou's learned from the rain bet. Right. Well, it is that time of the afternoon where the schools are going to be joining us. So we're going to go across to... T Hello everybody, sorry I'm not sure what just happened there. There is a big storm above us and I'm sure our school, McAuliffe Elementary, has just joined us this evening. So welcome to all of you. I look forward to hearing uh, from you with some questions. Our sighting might be short-lived, I must just tell you up front, because there is a huge storm brewing above us. We are in a very bad lightning storm and I do not feel very comfortable with this and I think the rain is going to come soon. It's, I can see the rain and the distance behind that line off to the right and then there's more rain behind us and we'll have to put our covers on but I'm not worried about the rain what I am worried about is all this lightning because we've got massive aerials on top of this car I'm and I'm a bit scared of being caught on lightning I've been in a car once that was struck by lightning that was not fun and I don't wish to have an experience like that again but the lions don't seem to be bothered do they look at them they're sitting up they're very proud scanning around them there have been lots of wildebeest which is a type of antelope that move around around here in Kenya and uh, I'm hoping that they're going to of course go after them they've been staring at them but I suppose you want to see who's talking to you my name is Taylor and on camera with me woo <laughs> I'm now blind, Taylor, um, and on camera with me today is Sebastian, and we're hoping to see these lions catch a meal. We've been very patient. We've been sitting here the entire afternoon waiting for them. I'm going to move up a bit further forward because the others have just walked around the corner. So I've got many gadgets here. Where is this one? My spotlight. I need my spotlight. Are my lights working? My lights are working. There's a lion. The other lions have gone this way, so we're going to go this way as well. Where are the wildebeest? The wildebeest have now run away because of this weather. They've now disappeared. Actually, I think I can see them down there. And the lions are sort of walking in their direction too. So that's where we're going to go. We're going to follow these cats. They're going exactly that way. But I don't want to put the spotlight on them. I want to try and get around them. So we're going to just go through this little dip quickly. And then we'll watch them in infrared. So. 
I'm not in infrared now, but when you joined us, you could, everything was in black and white. And that's because it's a special light that the lions can't see and the, and the prey, so the wildebeest can't see either. And it means that we don't interfere with the hunt. So I look out, switch my lights off. Now we're sitting in complete darkness besides the small presenter light. Look how dark it is. Can't see anything. Incredible, right? Should we go into infrared? What do you think, Seb? Should we show that? We're going to put it in infrared. Now look at that. Makes it a little bit better. There we go. Now the special light is on. And we're going to keep driving towards the wildebeest. Those flashes. No one's taking any photographs. That's just the lightning. I'm petrified at the moment, Sebastian. I don't want to be struck by this lightning. <laughs> I tried to drive away from the storm as well, but I think I'm going to be out of luck tonight. I think we're going to get rained on. Looks, oh no, I can feel it. Uh, Megan, we need to put our rain covers on right now, as in like yesterday. N Megan, I can't answer any questions. <laughs> right. Um, I'm going to send you across to Tristan, who's got a sign out. We are getting rained on. Bye-bye. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our beautiful, beautiful, beautiful leopard. It's a very warm welcome to McCall of Elementary. I hope that you're having a wonderful day at school. My name is Tristan, and on camera today, I've got Veerm, and we've got one of the most special, special, special animals that we could ask for. It's the most beautiful and rare of our cats here in Africa, and so it's a tough animal to see, and we're very lucky that we get to see them very often. So remember, you can ask lots of questions. Just ask Try and get through as many as possible. Now this boy leopard you'll see is very sleepy at the moment. It's now just at the end of a hot day today. It was about 85 degrees Fahrenheit today so it was very very hot and you'll hear that there's another car here that's with us. That's people that have come to see this animal and so he's had a long day of trying to stay nice and cool because it's been so hot. He also ate last night. He had a meal that he got from another female and that's why he's got a big tummy and because he's got a big tummy he's very hot and he's trying to rest and sleep and wait for the sun to go down but the sun is now slowly dripping and going behind the horizon which means that this leopard should hopefully start waking up you can see he's a little bit sleepy and he kind of pops his head up when the car started but he's going to take a while to wake up because it's still quite warm only when that sun is way down will we see him getting up and then he'll start to groom he might roll around a little bit and just so that he can kind of get himself comfortable but look at how beautiful he is Look at those amazing spots that you see there. Now his spots have a very special name. Their spots are called rosettes. Now the reason why his spots are called rosettes is because his spots are not solid. So they basically have broken apart and you see in between the black is a little gold bit. And so that's why it's called rosettes. It's almost like a flower that you see, like a rose. And so that's where the name comes from and, and that's what makes them different to the cheetah. Now cheetah are another type of spotted cat that we get here in Africa but cheetah have big solid black polka dots so it's just one big black dot and they don't explode out and form this little flower like you see on the leopard itself now just now I was saying that a leopard is a rare animal and is not one that you get to see very often and that's because leopards are very very shy and very very secretive which means they like to spend a lot of time hiding out in the bush and trying to find places where they can lie and wait because they will rely on their camouflage now camouflage is a word that we use to do, to basically describe or to tell us how this animal blends with its environment so how it makes itself match the trees and the grass so that it can hide from the animals that it's going to be hunting this leopard will hunt all kinds of antelope like your deer that you get in the U US and it will try and kind of go after those similar things here in Africa and it needs to be able to ambush them which means it needs to be able to hide and wait for those animals to come very close where it can then come out of the bush and grab it when the animal has no idea. It's not like the cheetah that uses a very very fast speed. This animal is built for power and it has to try and stay hidden for as long as possible and so that's why it has those spots. Now Giovanni you were asking how far they can run and I was saying it's not as far or how fast then they run sorry and I was saying they're not as far as a cheetah and so a leopard will run in miles will run at about 35 miles an hour that's how fast it will run 
Oh, no, look, there's, there's another predator that's just come. So there's a hyena that's arrived. Look, the hyena's just poked its head up. You can see the sun setting behind it. The leopard hasn't seen the hyena, so maybe the leopard's going to get chased by the hyena. Hyenas don't like leopards very much, and neither do leopards like hyenas, because they're both predators, and they're something that they have to worry about. But look at that. You see the hyena's on top? Now the leopard's seen the hyena. Now the leopard might run away. The hyena's here because the leopard had food this morning, and so it's looking to see if there's any more signs. But the hyena has realized no it's on its own it doesn't want to try and take on the leopard by itself and so that's why it's walking off a little bit you can see the leopard's not too worried they both of the same size but if the hyena comes closer look the leopard's going down it's trying to make itself smaller and trying to make sure that it doesn't show itself to the hyena now the hyena's a bit kind of nervous going past the car and it actually looks like it might leave the leopard alone let's see it's now come down to the same level as the leopard but no it's walking away so i think our leopard is going to be just fine and it's not going to get chased but that was very close and very special you're not going to see that every day Jaden, a leopard's favorite thing to do is well during the day when it's hot is to sleep like this leopard's been doing so he likes to lie down and rest and then when it gets a little bit cooler in the night he likes to walk around and try and hunt and try and find food and so leopards will go around and look for all kinds of animals that they can chase and try and then eat and so that's what they like to do they're hunters and they animals that eat meat and so that's their favorite things but during the day their favorite thing is to sleep and to stay out of the way of the sun you can see he's look at him scratching himself he's scratching because there's lots of different things out here that feed on his blood like ticks and so they make him itchy Heidi, you're asking if a leopard can kill an animal in one bite. Well, it depends on what kind of animal and what size of animal we're talking about. If we're talking about a small animal that they like to hunt, so things like a scrub hare, which is almost like a little rabbit, or things like mongoose, which are very small and almost about the size of a rat. Those kind of things, yes, they will kill them in one bite. They just bite it and they can break the spine and they can then kill it. But bigger animals, so things like the impala, which is like a deer, that animal is very big and and is strong and so the leopard has to try and get it around the throat where it can then close off the air and, and that animal stops breathing it can't kill it in just one bite so only the smaller animals that it hunts and the thing about leopard that makes it very special is that leopards will go after a very very wide amount of food so it will eat things from insects to small mongoose to rabbits to baby impalas and all the way up to even baby elephants and baby hippos. So they've got a very, very big amount of food to go after. And so it just depends on the different types of food that will indicate what they eat with. Starting to make that I think to for all the, the technical problems it's probably got to do with the storm that we're having here as well and well the sabi sand gremlins are nasty things but we're back it's still raining and i almost fell out of the car because i got such a fright there was a huge crack of thunder and whew, it was so scary even the lioness jumped up she got such a fright now they're very far away from us but they've sat down for the minute we've got a little gap that we're a little window that we're looking through at the moment have a look at that he <laughs> look at the tiny little hole that we're filming to trying to keep all the very expensive equipment that's in the car dry the cameras are not waterproof so there they sit this is very good hunting weather you can see all those flashes of light remember that's the uh, that well that is the lightning of course you can see them smelling the air now they probably got a very good chance of catching something in weather like this because the animals that they're going after will be petrified they'll be running around and they won't really know what's going on. 
Now, Alison, you're wondering if lions are scared of the storm. And no, they're, they're all right. Besides that big crack of thunder, which gave me a fright and which gave the lioness a fright, they're not wo- bo- bothered by it at all. Um, it, obviously, lightning can be a bit dangerous, and, and that's what makes me nervous about being in here. I'm not really worried about the rain at all. It's just it, it's the lightning. And there was an elephant that was recently struck by lightning in the Kruger National Park, which is in South Africa. So they're fine. They're okay. A lot of the hunts actually happen... Um, um, out here in, in stormy weathers like this, like I said, because they can't hear so the wildebeest, which is what they're hunting or well, they want to hunt, they can't hear the lions coming, also the rain is going to mask their scent and um, and that's very good except the flashes of lightning might give their presence away but they're moving very very far away now and I, we won't be able to carry on and move and follow them um, because I can't put any of my lights on because the wildebeest are around. So it's very difficult for me to try and drive and follow the lions and keep dry and, 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 and. But it's one of those things. We're lucky that we have these amazing new covers, though, that will do keep us dry, which is very cool. But there they've gone out of, out of view now. Um, so, yes, I can't really do anything at the moment. Like I said, I can't drive with the present light and try and see out my window because it's just black at the moment, darkness. I need to turn all the lights off and put my little light, I'm going to have to put a little light on, maybe even take my arm out the window and shine my spotlight. But while I do that and try and catch up with the lionesses, Tristan has still got a leopard for you. I do indeed. So our leopard is just watching over the dam. I was saying that there is a water hole here where the leopard might come and have a drink and it's now come over the top just to have a look around. It's also the sun is down so it's much much cooler now and so he can start moving around and being a young male leopard he doesn't have a territory or an area that is his own that he stays in all the time. He's still moving around where his mom had a territory or mom had an area that was her homeland and so so he moves around quite a bit and now that he's awake and is looking around I think he's going to come maybe have a drink and then from there we might see him moving and hopefully he's going to take us as he goes along and he checks his area out and looks for any signs of animals that he can maybe then hunt because it's always exciting watching a leopard moving through the darkness of the night. Addison leopards will sometimes play with other leopards but only if it's their mom or if it's a sibling so if it's a brother or a sister then they will play with one another it's not very common to see two leopards together at all now the interesting thing is sometimes here in the Sabi Sands we have a very very um, big number of leopards that we see in this area and that means that sometimes leopards like this will walk into a different family of leopards and so last night this male he actually walked into a mommy and a cub and he was then with them and they were kind of together but he didn't actually play with the mom or the cub because unfortunately they get the mom gets very very upset if a different leopard comes close to her cub and so this poor leopard had to then sit and he got a little bit of food but he wasn't able to play but if it was his sister or if it was his mother then yes he would have been able to play with them quite a bit and you'll see them jumping up and down and chasing each other and up trees and down trees and it's all quite a big game when they have these kind of things happening so it's amazing to watch but very seldom with other leopards Now, Michael, I'm sorry, I didn't hear your question all the way. If Megan, if you can just come, please just say it again. Now, Michael, leopards don't have the biggest of roars. They're not like lions that have a big booming roar that you hear from a long long way away leopards do have a roar but it's we call it a saw and the reason why we call it a saw now Michael I don't know if you've ever spent time near someone that has cut some wood and they use a sharp knife basically to cut the wood and that motion of going back and forward is called a saw and and the cutting of the wood you use a saw to cut it and the sound is the exact same as when a leopard makes the sound so leopards do like to saw and they make a big noise and normally it's at night now this leopard that you see here he won't be sawing yet because he's still too young he doesn't have an 
area or a home that he's set up only when they have a home will they soar to try and then keep other leopards out of that area and away from there so that's what it's called but yes they can make a roaring sound but it doesn't sound like a lion's roar at all I'm going to actually try and see I think I do have a leopard sawing a recording of a leopard sawing so that I can play it for you so that you can hear what it sounds like because I'm not very good at making the sound but if I've got it here then I can play it for you and you'll be able to then hear exactly what a leopard saw is like now I wonder if I do have it I must have a leopard sawing somewhere I've luckily enough seen leopard sawing quite some it's quite a few times and so I'm hoping that I do have somewhere a recording of a leopard sawing but it's a very rough sound so I'm going to keep kind of scrolling through to see if I've got it um, I don't know if I do actually I think I might have unfortunately deleted it off my phone by mistake that's not good news at all I was hoping that I did have the leopard sawing but it seems as though I don't have it with me oh no that's not good but our leopard is still just gazing into the sunset I wonder if maybe he spotted something as well that he's just watching because generally leopards are quite sort of lazy cats when they when it's still the sun is up and he might be a little bit warm and I thought he would have still been sleeping but he's kind of looking off into the distance at the moment and so I don't know if maybe he spotted something you see the water goes up like this and there's a lot of places there where leopard or prey animals can come and drink and so that's maybe why he's on top just having a little look to see he might have spotted something that he's watching also I suppose he doesn't want to get caught by those unfriendly hyenas again by being on top of or below and not seeing them coming it's also why he might have moved but look he's up now so I wonder if he's gonna come and drink and isn't he absolutely beautiful he's one of my favorite leopards that we see here and he's well leopards are my favorite animals in the world so I love spending time with them but hopefully he's not going to go back where he was oh, no don't go that way all right well we're gonna have to try we're gonna try and get back around so we can see him now honey leopards are most definitely enemies of other animals but and the reason why is because they eat other animals so they will go and hunt uh, impalas and dikers and steenbok which are all little antelopes which are basically hoofed animals so things like your deer and they'll hunt birds and they'll hunt insects and they'll hunt things like rabbits and so they're the enemy of a lot of different animals also if a leopard comes across something like a baby hyena or a baby um, lion or something like that they will sometimes also kill them so it's a bit of a difficult one and, and they and they are enemies of a lot of animals and that's because they eat meat if they didn't eat meat then they wouldn't be enemies of those animals so you'll find all the animals that don't eat meat they are okay it's the ones that do eat meat that get themselves into trouble now I just want to try and get myself into a place where we can see this leopard a little bit better. So Daniel, this leopard is not hungry right now and the reason why I say that, I'm going to try and park so that you can see why. Look at his tummy. If you see his tummy, you'll see that it is very swollen and big and has lots of food in it and that's because this leopard ate last night. So he was able to get himself a little bit of a meal last night and so no, he's not hungry. But the thing about leopards is that they are what's called opportunistic. So opportunistic means that anything that comes near them, so any prey animal like a deer comes past they will try and hunt it even if they've had a really good meal so it's not like us when we eat and then we very full and then we don't want to eat anymore the leopard if it sees a chance to get a food source it will grab it straight away and the reason why is because leopards sometimes can go two three days without food now imagine trying to not eat for two days you'll be very hungry and so if there's a chance to grab food they will grab it and then they put it up in a tree to keep it away from the hyenas like we saw just now or from any of the other predators so that they can feed on it over two three four days or as long as it takes to finish that particular food item so they are very clever in that regard so you can see still very sleepy eyes are closing but isn't he so beautiful he's one of the most beautiful cats that we could ever wish to see in fact leopards for me are just absolutely amazing 
Michael, leopards do sleep a lot. They don't sleep as much as the lions that Taylor have. Taylor's lions will sleep for about 20 hours a day sometimes, which is a very, very long time. But leopards do sleep a lot as well. They'll probably sleep for at least 12 or 13 hours a day. Now, the reason why leopards and lions do sleep a lot is because when they are active, they use a lot of energy very quickly. It's very difficult to run very fast and chase animals and then wrestle with the animal and, and, and be able to kill it and so they need to rest for a lot of the time so that they can keep their strength and keep their energy so that when they do hunt and when they do try kill that animal that they are able to grab it and be able to bring it down and so lots of rest also because they're covered in fur they get very hot and so when here in Africa it's the middle of the day and the sun is shining it's often a very 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 warm and so leopards with fur all over them it's tough for them to walk around so they rather go and find some shade where they can sleep and try and stay nice and cool thing fast because he's been hot today and because he's got lots of food in his tummy and the food in his tummy is difficult to break down and so it causes a lot of heat and that means that he has to breathe fast to try and cool himself down now Naira, you were wondering why he's breathing so fast and like i say he's basically trying to cool himself and what you'll find is i don't know if you saw earlier when he was sitting on the on watching over the dam or over the water his mouth was open and he was breathing quite fast with his mouth open and the reason for that is because he has saliva in his mouth now saliva is basically the moisture or the, the wetness in your mouth and that saliva is on the tongue and so as he's breathing the heat that is coming out of his body is causing that wetness to evaporate. Now evaporate basically means that the water gets turned into a gas via heat and it then gets expelled and that process of changing from water to gas causes the blood in his tongue to get actually cooler. So it cools his blood down and makes him far cooler. The other reason why he's breathing fast is because with a full tummy his diaphragm which is the muscle that controls how much air can go into the lungs is pushed right up against his lungs and so his lungs can't get as big as they need to be to take normal breaths and so his breath is much shorter and shallower as we call it and that means that he has to breathe much faster. So it's a very clever system that the lions and leopards and big cats have. It's to be able to cope with living in places that gets up to 120 degrees Fahrenheit during the day they need to be able to find places and ways to deal with that and that's how we end up with a situation that he's able to walk around and still function. Now you'll see that we might start going into infrared which is like what Taylor had because the light is starting to go away and so if it goes black and white there we go it's in black and white now and that's because we switched to the infrared so that we can see better because it's starting to get dark now here yeah, you wondering if the leopards see or hear very well sorry yes they do they are very 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 good hearing and very good eyesight and very good sense of smell and the reason is because leopards are mostly active at night and so it's difficult to see at night they need to be able to use their ears to hear and to see and pick up all kinds of animals and, and prey so that they can then hunt better at night. The other thing is that their eyes are different to our eyes. We see in all beautiful colors and we're able to see very well during the day but at night you know if you go outside and it's very dark you can't see anything. If the lights go off you can't see. Whereas a leopard it sees like we do during the day and that's because it has a very very clever eye. In terms of, of lions and leopards and, and, and with us as people we have two types of cells in our eyes so we've got what's called rods and and what we've got what's called cones and so rods are cells that are able to pick up light so it allows um, light to come into the eye and so for us to be able to see in darker times and cones are for color so to be able to pick up all the colors of the world now in a leopard's case they don't have very many cones they have mostly rods and so they can see at night and so their hearing their eyesight and their sense of smell is very well developed to be able to hear all of these animals moving and so that they can become very good hunters at night You'll also notice that they've got very long whiskers. Now their whiskers help them with all of that as well because their whiskers are able to pick up vibrations as well at night. 
Now, Amanda, you're asking if leopards have sharp teeth. They have very sharp teeth. So if this leopard would yawn for us, then we'd be able to see those sharp teeth. But I might have a picture somewhere of a leopard's teeth, and then I can show you just how sharp they are, because it's amazing to actually see how big their teeth actually are. They've got these big, sharp canines, and that's what they have to use to try and grab an animal. And then they've got triangular shaped teeth that act just like the saw that I was talking about earlier for the wood they act as a way to be able to cut pieces of meat off of a carcass and be able to then eat it now I'm going to show you what their teeth look like because I've got a picture for you to be able to see so if we go in over there Viem, that will help you so this is one of the leopards that we see in this area and I want to show you their teeth now look at these big sharp canines that you can see there so those are the canines that they use to kill animals all right so those teeth are going to go in and try and kill the animal and then you see that on the edges here they have those triangle teeth that I was telling you about now those act like a little knife so if you've ever had a steak or you've had chicken or something like that and you've tried to cut it you know that you need a sharp knife and this is the exact same thing so the top ones and the bottom ones together they slice and they will cut a bit of meat off for the cat to swallow and then if you have a look at these teeth in between the canines so the ones up at the top are probably easier to see you see those ones they're not as sharp now the reason why those aren't as sharp is because those teeth are there to be able to pull off feathers and fur when they're eating they don't digest feathers and fur very well and so they're able to pull it off using those teeth there that basically act like their fingers and are able to pull off little chunks and then if you have a look at the tongue, you see the tongue looks very rough in coloration. So the tongue doesn't look like it would, uh, or our tongue would look. It's because it's covered in lots of rough hairs and it feels a little bit like sandpaper. And that sandpaper is very rough and it's also to be able to lick the fur and feathers off of their kill so that they can be able to eat it. But there we go. That's a nice indication of just how big their teeth can be. And that's a young little leopard. Her teeth will get bigger. Jasmine, luckily I've never been attacked by a leopard. Is you hear the hyenas? So the leopard, you see, he's curious because there's hyenas close by. So look, he's going to go right now. We need to just try and go around and see what's going on. Look, look how he's stalking. See how he's gotten himself lower so that he can see without getting any attention. Look at that and look at the beautiful colors as well. How amazing is that? Now the noise you heard was hyenas. So I'm going to try and just quickly go around so I can show you the hyenas. And those hyenas are making a noise because probably they are playing or interacting with each other. So it's really going to be cool to see. Now I've got to just try and find a way through here. Sorry, VM, very bouncy. We've got to get over some logs and some chair stumps and all kinds of other things and try and see if we can get into the sighting mm, and round. Come on, car, turn rusty. There we go, Rusty managed to make it past the tree. Now our leopard is still on top there, so I want to just quickly get round. So the hyenas are here at the dam. Look how many hyenas there are. There's three hyenas here that I can see, and the leopard sitting on the dam here watching the hyenas from over there. So leopard on our right hand side, hyenas on our left, and the hyenas are coming for a drink. They were at the carcass or at the food that this leopard had earlier. In fact, there's four hyenas that are there. Look, there they're all going. You can see there's one on the far left, one going up the bank, another one in the water. And so they're all coming for a drink before they start going off and looking for food. And that's what they're after. They're going to try and find dead animals that they can eat or even sometimes hunt their own animals. A lot of people think that hyenas are only what's called a scavenger. Now, a scavenger is an animal that basically relies on finding dead food, but that's not always the case with hyenas. They actually are very good predators, and they can hunt for themselves. Now, the reason why they were making noise is because they met up with one another, and they were trying to just chat to each other. And it's like us talking and greeting each other. It's like we say hello and those kind of things. It's the exact same for those hyenas but look at how beautiful our leopard is and you see how as soon as he heard it you were asking earlier about his sense of hearing his hearing is very good because he's able to hear that and come straight to this area Dominique you're asking if leopards can climb trees yes Dominique a leopard is probably the best animal at climbing a tree they are very very good at it and they've adapted and, and 
use that to be able to survive out here. Remember, there's hyenas and there's lions and there's other leopards. And so those animals, or particularly hyena and lion, are not the best climbers. And so a leopard, to stay safe, can jump up into a tree, go right up into the top and sit up there and stay safe. Also, what can happen is if they've got food, they can take their food up into a tree where they can keep it safe from the hyenas that will try and steal it from them. So they are very good climbers. In fact, they're the best climbers of all the big cats that we see out here. Isn't he magnificent though? Look at how full his tummy is. And Nisha, my favorite animal is what we're looking at right now, is a leopard. I love leopards. I love spending as much time as I can with them. They are my favorite animals because, well, one is they are absolutely beautiful. Two, they are incredibly strong animals and their life and the way that they live is very difficult. To live by yourself is not easy out here. You can't get anybody else to get food for you. There's nobody else that tries to protect you. So they've got to survive with all these other animals that are out here that are threatening their their lives so I really like that they're able to do that they also are incredibly strong animals probably one of the strongest animals that we have out here if you take their weight to power ratio so that basically means how much they weigh versus how much power they can produce they are one of the strongest animals out here and so for me I just love that they also are shy they are secretive they're a difficult animal to find sometimes we can go days without finding these leopards and so for us it's a very special thing to be able to see them and we are are so spoiled that we can see leopards and that's why I love them and and also out here we track leopards which means that we'll try and find their footprints and follow their footprints to find them and it's the biggest test of your skill as a tracker is to track an, an, a leopard because it's it walks in difficult places it's a light animal which means it doesn't leave a really big track like the lions or the elephants do and so it's a hard animal to track but it's exciting to learn how to track them and to try and track them so that's why I love them so much Namir, it depends on the animal, but these leopards sometimes will actually come very, very close to us. Sometimes we'll find a situation where these leopards will be right next to the car. I've had this particular male lying right next to my tire where he's basically, his back is touching the tire of the car. So sometimes very close. But the thing is with animals and the best way to be out here is that you drive and you give the animal space. And if the animal wants to come near you and lie down near you, that's okay because then it's not scared of you. But if I had to try and drive that close to him I would chase him and I would break the trust that we have with these animals these animals have learned that we are not somebody that tries to kill them we don't try and hurt them we don't steal food from them and that's why we're able to see an animal like a leopard which is normally shy it doesn't want attention it doesn't want things to see it but because we are respectful and we don't go too close and we don't push in it in any way then we can get very very close and it's the same with all the other animals that are out here if we show some respect then generally the animals can come quite close and we get to see them amazingly like we are seeing this leopard right now but you can see he's still watching where those hyenas went the hyenas have left now they're no longer here they've moved away but he's still watching in that area he's still wary he knows that one hyena is not a problem but four or five of hyenas that's a very serious problem and something that he has to be very careful of and stay away from and so that's why he's watching carefully because if they come towards him he's then going to have to run away and try and find some way to get safe and normally that's up into a tree sometimes they will be able to run and the hyenas will leave them alone because the hyenas don't want to fight with the leopard they know a leopard is dangerous but what they want is to try and see if there isn't any food available that they can potentially have or get and be able to grab so Zadian, you're asking of how do the apples, I mean apples, <laughs> the animals actually see the leopard if they blend in so well. Well, the reason is, is that these leopards, well, have a scent and they smell. So the other animals out here can smell them. And that's a lot of the time. Oh, look, you see he's trying to catch flies. So he's rolling around because there's flies flying around and he's trying to catch them. There we go. So they are able to smell him. Also, if he's sitting in a place like this, he's 
out in the open it is quite easy to see him it's only when he's in thick areas that it's tough to see him but he still has a scent and so things like hyenas who have very powerful noses that can smell very well they will find him by smelling him and following the smell until they see where he is also if he has food the food it smell it, it, the, the food will rot and, and that smell is very strong and a lot of the animals can smell it you see how he's trying to catch the flies so you're asking earlier if they play with other leopards well you can see sometimes they play all on their own and they try and grab the flies and try and get all the things that they can from them it's very cute no your paws are too big to catch flies <laughs> Jack, we do live with all these animals. I live from where we are right now. I'm living maybe not even five minutes drive from where we are now. I, we, have a hut, we have rooms that are here in the bush and we live out here with the animals. And the reason why is because we start our jobs very early in the morning and we end quite late in the evening. And so we have to get here when it's still dark because the animals are active at sunrise and sunset and so yes we do live out here and it's the best life in the world jack we get to see all these animals every day our neighbors are elephants and leopards and lions it's dangerous but it is very very cool to live out here and to hear them at night and to be able to see all of them So Tasha, you were asking if I like my job because it looks like fun. Tasha, it is the best job in the world. Uh, we have really do have the best job, VM and I. We are able to be out here every single day. We get to see the beautiful animals of this world. We're outside in the fresh air, in the sunshine. So we're seeing things out. It's good for our brains and our skin and all kinds of other things to be in the fresh air. And so it's a wonderful thing to do and, and to learn from animals and see animals, particularly because nowadays animals, unfortunately, are under a bit of pressure because us as humans we're growing and our population is getting bigger and bigger and we have a situation where we're pushing all of our wild animals out of their homes and they all losing areas to live and so it's becoming harder and harder to find wild animals and so we're very very lucky that we get to see all of these animals even the rare ones that are almost getting close to extinction which means that they're going to be no longer any of them around we get to see those every day so I love what I do and I love to be able to tell you about it and teach you all at home so that you maybe one day you too will be able to come out here and see these animals and will realize the importance of looking after them so Bianca it's you're asking how long it took me to be a ranger well or become a ranger well it's a it's a difficult thing because as a ranger it's it, it to get my basic qualifications to be able to start working was a six month um, course that based me inside one of these bush areas where we did practicals every day so we'd go out and we'd walk and we'd do um, drives and then we'd go between the drives we would go to the classroom and do all of our learning and studying about all of these kind of things but as a ranger you learn every single day so even though I've been doing this for quite some time and I've been out here for a long time it doesn't mean that I'm not learning every day there's still little things that we don't know there's always something that is different animals react to their environment and will change their behavior to try and help themselves out and so and to survive and so we're learning all the time and that's the best thing about this job is even though I am qualified to be our chair I still learn every single day and that's a very special thing to have learn every day and you get to spend time watching and, and seeing changes in things that we don't know and, 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 and things that we're still learning Bianca, you're asking what's my favorite cat besides a leopard. Um, Bianca, I'm not sure actually. I, I suppose lions, I do like lions. I, uh, lions are, are, are good animals and they, they, I like the way that they live together and, and the way that they hunt and bring down such big animals and the power of a male lion's roar and those kind of things is absolutely amazing. So I suppose lions, but I also like caracals. Now caracal is a smaller cat, but a very strong, very powerful cat. It's got these big powerful legs and long pointy ears it looks very similar to a lynx so basically that's what it looks like and they are amazing animals as well in fact they are about as strong as what the leopards are so an incredible cat 
Now, unfortunately, it is that time of the day where we start to go home and unfortunately it's all the time we have for our day out in the bush. I hope that all of you have absolutely loved every minute of being here in Africa with us and that we've been able to chat and talk about all the questions that you have and I hope one day that you will come out here and see all of these for yourself and I hope that you also enjoy the rest of your day further. But for myself and VM, we'll see you all on the Sunrise Safari. Thank you.